Hello, hello everybody. Uh, nice to hear you. Nice to meet you. And um, uh, within a few minutes, we will start our webinar about outtail data processing. And it's uh, hello, 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 hello. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, today it will be very interesting webinar. Uh, uh, we will show you data processing from Autel Eva to Pro data set. And, it, uh, um, and as you know, Autel is underestimated drone, really. And um, uh, thank you for some of our clients who ask us to, uh, to design PPK solution for Autel. And uh, tell the truth, I was very impressed by quality of Autel data sets. And this is why we decided to design and to produce PPK solution for all of our clients. And of course, uh, today I, I will try to explain why Autel PPK is, uh, has a lot of possibilities and uh, has a lot of advantages against DJI Mavic 2 Pro, even Phantom Pro Pro, PPK or RTK. And it is time to discuss about it. And if you have any questions, uh, you are welcome to ask them and you can write messages in Q and A, Q and A uh, part of our um, Zoom interface. And uh, first of all, I would like to ask how many of our, uh, of our participants are using uh, uh, are using Autel right now. Have you ever uh, have you ever used uh, Autel uh, ever to pro drone uh, for mapping? Okay, uh, never use. Uh, yeah, for me it's okay. Okay, okay. So, for, uh, as as you know. Um, uh, I would like to explain my experience. Uh, I have uh, 20 years experience of, survey, of surveying, mapping, and photogrammetry, and uh, uh, and um, four years ago, we invented solution to be installed on Phantom 4 Pro or Mavic 2 Pro uh, to convert consumer drone to survey drone, and it helped it it, it helped us it helped us a lot uh, in our own survey activities and it helps us uh, right now for in our survey uh, jobs. But we are always looking for new solutions. And uh, um, and uh, what, what what I can see from data uh, data sets from out there, I would say that it is amazing drone and. Uh, uh, it's not commonly used for, for survey and mapping right now, but it, it should be used. It provides a great quality of the images and together with uh, PPK equipment, it provides you possibility to create very detailed and very accurate uh, three-dimensional maps and orthophoto. And today I would like to show how to process data and I would like to describe it in more, de in more details. Okay, so uh, I think, uh, should we start? How do you think? Maxim, oh, we yeah. should wait. Uh, yeah. Uh, Let's share your presentation. Yeah, I, I will share my presentation. Uh, I will share the screen and I will share my presentation as well. So, uh, as you know, oh, it's nice to meet you and uh, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Maxim Bakulkov. I, I'm a founder and uh, I'm a head of uh, Topadron company. And uh, our company produce uh, different kind of equipment for survey and mapping. And first of all, uh, all our solutions uh, was designed especially for our own purposes. And uh, first of all, we invented uh, a PPK solution to be installed on a consumer drone, very low cost drone uh, uh, to, for survey and mapping uh, in unreachable areas. After that, we understood that it is very uh, uh, it's uh, 
it's very important to provide such equipment for all uh, surveyors. Why? Because uh, with using of PPK equipment, uh, you can achieve very good accuracy and you, uh, you can decrease number of field box and you don't need to lay ground control points and you don't need to, uh, and you don't need to walk uh, uh, a lot in the field. And uh, after that, we designed a wide range of PPK equipment, which can be installed on uh, even on DJI Mavic Mini, on DJI Phantom 4 Pro, Mavic 2 Pro, DJI Air 2S. And uh, all this, uh, all this uh, equipment are widely used all over the world right now. And several years ago, we designed our own solution for LiDAR survey and it helped us to walk in mountain areas, in the forest areas. And it, it, it helped us to be very efficient and to cut our expenses uh, and uh, uh, to create, uh, to create uh, three-dimensional maps or uh, just uh, map layouts or any cut drawing and so on. And right now we provide a wide range of for solutions for DJI drones, but, and of course, we, um, uh, before we thought that uh, DJI is the best drone uh, and it's very, um, it, it has very good quality, a low price and so on. But uh, um, after some situation, we understood that Autel can, can be used as well and it provides a great results. And what is the advantage of Autel? Uh, Autel has 20 megapixel camera, it's rolling shutter camera, camera. but in, in terms of resolution and in terms of quality of the image, Autel camera is much better than camera of Phantom 4 Pro or Mavic 2 Pro. It's amazing. It provides very detailed and high, uh, very detailed images and this high uh, quality. But uh, if you are going to make a survey, you need to know precise position of the photos. Why? Uh, if you know this precise position of the photos, you can easily remove rolling shutter distortion from the camera because Autel camera, like uh, Mavic 2 Pro camera has rolling shutter and Autel, if you install a PPK solution or if you use a real RTK, um, uh, original RTK model on Autel, you will get very good results. Uh, you will re remove rolling shutter distortion in an easy way and you will get very detailed model. And Autel has a uh, very long flight time more than 30 minutes you can fly and you can cover a bigger area in comparison with Mavic 2 Pro or Phantom 4 Pro. And as you know, PPK solution, what does it mean? PPK, it's uh, uh, post-processing kinematic techniques. It provides better accuracy, accuracy in comparison with RTK technology. And uh, it doesn't depend on direct connection between drone and base station. And this PPK, this PPK solution, you can fly within 20 kilometers range from the base station. And, you are, uh, and if you fly in the mountain areas, if you fly in forest areas, it doesn't matter if you have a connection between the drone and base station. You just install a base station and you, you run in, in a static mode. And I, I, I will show it later. Uh, and after that, you, uh, you just post-process data uh, after the flight and you will get very precise results. And uh, Autel has uh, internal uh, uh, software for mission planning, Autel Explorer. And of course it has some limitations, like uh, you are not able to make uh, uh, a terrain following mode. So you can fly only on a flat, under the flat terrain. But uh, uh, today I will show how to use Autel for uh, with the terrain following mode, how to prepare mission to follow the terrain. It's very important for, for mapping in the forest areas, in the mountain areas, and it's, it's very good to uh, achieve very good accuracy. And, uh, and I was very impressed by the quality of our day together with our PPK model when we can achieve accuracy uh, within three centimeters. And we, I will show you in, in real examples how to ach achieve accuracy of three dimensional model within three centimeters. But uh, in the beginning, I would, I would like to, uh, to describe the situation why we decided to move on out there. Uh, a few months ago, we made a training for uh, one surveyor from Martinique. Martinique, it's a uh, um, Caribbean island and uh, it has a uh, mountain terrain. Uh, and uh, it's not possible, uh, 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 it has mountain terrain, a lot of forest. And uh, our client asked us to 
to provide training, asked us to provide training for LiDAR survey. And um, we install our LiDAR system on Matrix 200. He has, uh, he, uh, he has old style Matrix uh, 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 version one. And we provide training for him and uh, we fly uh, to, uh, over the terrain, uh, terrain uh, to get um, a three dimensional model from, uh, from LiDAR. And LiDAR provides very good accuracy, but the point cloud from the LiDAR is not colorized. And in this case, uh, our client from Martinique, he asked us, by the way, uh, this one is a photo of our client, uh, Jean-Francois. If, uh, if uh, I think Jean-Francois should uh, join us today as well, but he asked us, is it possible to colorize point cloud? How can I do it? And uh, he said, I have uh, out a drone. And I said, OK, we can upgrade your out a drone and we can install PPK solution. In this case, you can colorize point cloud uh, from separate flight. Uh, but in order to colorize point cloud, you need to know precise position of the photos. And I took his drone to our office in Switzerland. And we made up upgrade uh, of his drone. Uh, we installed PPK model on it. And uh, where is it? So I will show you this one. It's uh, a drone from uh, from Martinique, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's photo of our test flights here in Switzerland. And finally, we design this this kind of solution. So we have our tech drone, and we install PPK model, and uh, we connect this PPK model uh, precisely to the camera to the uh, outer system to catch photo events. As a result, we we know every uh, every point every uh, every point of image. And uh, this is why I would like to show you this uh, project. So we provide the training, and uh, one of our clients asked us to, to, to make a service to upgrade the drone. And finally, we created. And we made several tests uh, without it, and we were very impressed. And this is why uh, right now we are trying to push this drone for surveying market. And there are a lot of clients who, has out, who, uh, who have out in their hands, but they don't use uh, RTK version. And they can install PPK solution on the drone. And after that, they will con convert consumer drone to, to mapping machine, very precise mapping machine. But uh, first of all, I would like to talk about mission planning. So if, if we look at uh, our tail explorer, it's an internal uh, predefined uh, mission planning application from our tail. You can create a simple grid mission or polygon mission uh, to, ma uh, to make mapping. Or even you can create double grid mission, but it's not possible to make uh, terrain falling mode. Uh, it's not possible to fly uh, to make oblique flights and so on. And 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 we thought, what we can do? And you know, there is a very good uh, mission planning application. It is UGCS Pro, and UGCS Pro provides a, a wide range of tools for mapping, like corridor mapping, like oblique flights, simple grid, double grid mission as well as terrain falling. And you can add your own terrain to fly, for example, in, uh, in a, a mining sign in open pit where, where terrain is, uh, is changeable every time due to some uh, uh, earthworks. And in this case, uh, we thought, how can we use UGCS together with our tech? And there is a solution. And um, uh, how, uh, so, and the solution is the following. You, you can just prepare mission in UGCS uh, to sit, uh, set up all uh, overlapping parameters, set up altitude, everything in automat mode. Uh, this is terrain falling mode, and you can see that it is a terrain falling mode here, and it, sh it shows us terrain. And after that, we can simply export data in KML format. And after that, we can upload it to uh, Autel Explorer, and after that, you can fly uh, with the terrain falling in uh, original Autel Explorer. In this case, uh, you can extend the usability of the drone, as well as you can add oblique flights for three-dimensional dim mapping and so on. So this is the idea for, for, for mapping. Uh, so first of all, we need to prepare a mission. And mission should be, uh, should be prepared very carefully in order to avoid any obstacles. And terrain falling mode is uh, very efficient. Next, uh, as soon as we uh, as, as soon as, as we made the flight, and uh, we need to process data, and I would like to show data processing on our test polygon where we, we measure a lot of checkpoints. We use uh, 
out there with installed, uh, already pre-installed PPK solution and we fly with a double grid mission. And after that, uh, and before the flight, we, uh, we measure a lot of checkpoints, a lot of checkpoints everywhere in the area to estimate accuracy, to evaluate accuracy, to compare a uh, point cloud, which is created from our tail with the checkpoints. And, uh, uh, and another one, uh, very important part, you need to install a base station. And as a base station with PBK solution, you can use any kind of uh, survey grade GNSS receiver. In this project, we use uh, Rich, uh, Emilit Rich RS2, which, we, which was installed in the area, and we know precise position of Rich RS2 as well. So, uh, but, uh, and additionally, you can download Rhinox files from course network or any available survey network where you can download Rhinox files from permanent base stations. In this case, so you have very, uh, very flexible solution. You are not stick to, uh, to RTK network. Uh, for example, you work in the mountain areas and there is no any internet connection and uh, how, uh, how to fly without a, uh, RTK, for example. In this case, you can use PPK processing, just install a base station in any way, in any place within 20 kilometers range from the base station. And after that, uh, after the flight, you just download Rhinox from, from the base station. After the flight, you just download images from, uh, from, from the drone and you download UBX file from our PPK solution. Here we have an SD card uh, to store uh, raw Genesis data on the drone, kinematic data. And after that, we need to post-process data. Uh, in order to post-process data, we design uh, our own solution. It is uh, TapaDrone post-processing software, which support different kinds of drones, starting from uh, our own PPK equipment. We support uh, DJI RTK uh, Phantom for pro uh, DJI RTK uh, systems like uh, Phantom RTK or DJI P1. We support in our software uh, LiDAR data processing, uh, 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 post-processing of trajectory, generation of point cloud. We have a static model which allows you to, uh, to, to define precise position of your base station in static mode. We have precise point position uh, system which allows you to define precise position of your base station uh, on the, uh, without any reference network. And if your base station works more than three hours, you will get very good accuracy and um, and everything is designed in our software. And uh, additionally, we have special models to uh, convert coordinates. We support different kinds of projections. You can import your projections and you can, you can add or enjoy the, all, all kinds of data sets. And why uh, we, I, I'm focusing on the projection and enjoy it? You know that uh, there are a lot of uh, photogrammetric software which doesn't uh, support different kinds of projection. For example, if we are talking about 3D survey, or, uh, or if we are talking of uh, if we are talking about um, separate geoids, your uh, your local geoid files, you can process data. You can define precise position of your photos in post processing, and you can use your own geoid, and you can. Uh, um, change elevation uh, due to the joy, then, uh, and you can work in your own projection. So how to process data in uh, our Topadron post-processing software? First of all, you should select folder uh, with images from one flight. After that, you need to select raw GNSS data, it's UBX file, and you, uh, you need to uh, select the type of uh, drone offset. We, we have a predefined offsets for all kinds of uh, drones. And, uh, and you need to add the Rhinox file from the base station. And uh, be careful, you need to change, uh, check, uh, uh, you need to check uh, coordinates of the base station as well to, to process data. And after that, you run uh, data processing. As a result, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the map, you can, uh, first of all, you can see just raw, raw position of images, which was captured by original um, uh, GPS receiver, which is installed inside of uh, Autel, for example. And it has just navigation, uh, and all images uh, have just navigation position. But, uh, but uh, after post-processing, you will get precise position of each photo. And it's shown, uh, it, will be shown in, uh, it will be shown on the map. And uh, color of these points are showing us uh, accuracy of the, of the images, for example, uh, light green uh, uh, color shows us fixed position of each photo. 
uh, dark green color. Uh, there are some uh, dark green uh, color here uh, of the images. It shows us uh, uh, float position. And if you don't have any solution, for example, base station doesn't cover uh, all time of data uh, of, of the working of the drone, you will have uh, uh, you, you will have navigation position. In this case, you will get uh, red color. After post processing, uh, um, so you can evaluate the accuracy on the map. And after that, uh, software creates a set of images with uh, precise coordinates embedded embedded uh, to exit text of the images. And after that, you can use these images for photogrammetric data processing. Uh, and right now, I would like to show you. Uh, I would like to show you data processing in real time. So first of all, uh, first of all, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I will uh, I will be glad to answer them uh, on on this stage. Uh, are there any questions right now? There's no questions in Q&A uh -huh. section. Do not hesitate to ask your questions, please. You may use chat or Q&A se section. OK. Um, and right now, we'd like to show all data processing. Um, I will open a folder uh, with data set. And I will share my screen. Um, OK. OK, so I will share my screen right now once again. So after, uh, after the flight, you need to download data. First of all, you need to download raw images uh, from Altair. This one is just one flight, double grid mission, which I show you. Uh, additionally, what you need? You need uh, to copy UBX file from the drone. Uh, uh, it's stored here in SD card. And this one, it's a UBX file. It's a raw uh, Genesis data, kinematic data. After that, uh, you need to download Rhinox file from the base station, uh, which you install, uh, install on the place of your flight, or you can download Rhinox files from any, uh, uh, any uh, survey, uh, survey network which is available in your country. This one, it's a Rhinox file from the base station. What else? That's uh, uh, what we need. And of course, we measured some GCPs. And these GCPs will be used to evaluate the accuracy. Um, uh, I, I, I see there is one question. OK, how easy uh, was to integrate PPK model into our tail? The brand collaborated with you, providing some technical guidance. Uh, thanks. Uh, it's a good question. Um, no. Um, for us, of course, it's what it, it was not uh, like a rocket science to install PPK uh, equipment on the drone. Why? Because we already design uh, and we already produce solution for DJI drones, and we know how it works. So we don't ask uh, any support from Mountain, but uh, we have a lot of uh, engineers uh, which help us to connect Genesis receiver precisely to Autel system. We check internal uh, program of our uh, Autel system. And after that, we, uh, we capture photo events. And of course, uh, with, uh, with using of all our experience, we, uh, we achieved very good accuracy of capturing of photo events. It's very important for data processing. So uh, this is the answer. Of, uh, so we can design a PPK solution, I think, for, for any drone which is available for the market, which is available on the market right now. But we are not going to spend our time for unuseful uh, drones. But I'll tell it's uh, really, really a very important uh, thing. And I think it will increase uh, uh, it will increase number of surveyors, really, really. And it will, uh, it will increase. Uh, uh, it's uh, popularity in the world. OK, next. Uh, what next? Next. And right now, uh, I will show you data processing. So we have Topadron post-processing software. As I already said, that there are a lot of models in Topadron post-processing software. We can post-process Autel uh, data, Autel uh, data. We can post-process RTK data data sets uh, from RTK drones. We can post-process LiDAR data, generate point cloud from LiDAR data. We were able to, uh, to make uh, 
static post-processing, uh, precise point position. There are some tools to convert coordinates. Uh, we have uh, special tools to merge different Rhinox files together and so on. But, um, what, uh, but I would like to show you right now all steps. So first of all, we, we will select folder with images, just folder with images. And our software will read uh, meta, uh, metadata from images and it shows us location of images. Just a simple location from uh, navigation uh, GPS system from our app. After that, we need to select uh, uh, UBX file from the DOM. And on the right side, uh, we have some uh, uh, internal information like a uh, number of photo events, uh, uh, time of uh, first observation, uh, time of the, uh, of the end of observation of the data sets, and we know everything. What else? What else? Next, we, we need to set up uh, we need to set up uh, drone offset. We, we have predefined uh, offsets for any kind of drones. And right now I will use only for Autel, but we have uh, support for Phantom 4 Pro, Mavic 2 Pro, Mavic Mini, uh, even uh, for uh, 61 megapixel camera from Topo Drone or for DJI Air 2S and so on. Uh, what next? And we, will, we, we need to select a, a Rhinox file from the base station. Uh, so I will open Rhinox file and software will import, uh, software will show position of the base station on the map as well. And uh, software will import precise position of the base station as well. And if you don't have precise position of the data, you need to update. Next step. As I already said, we can choose different kind of joids, different kind of joids. As you can see right now in my software, I import a lot of joids all over the world to help our clients to process data. And we can choose different projection. Uh, here we can use just simple uh, UTM, uh, but uh, you can import your own projection parameters and you can uh, select from, uh, from a list and so on. And I will use uh, uh, UTM projection Uh, just simple UTM projection. Okay. Next step, uh, we will run data processing. We click start, and uh, software will post-process GNSS data. It will define. Uh, it will calculate precise trajectory of the flight. After that, it will define precise position of, and of each photo. And it will combine uh, images and precise position uh, of the photos, and it will uh, software will embed the precise coordinates after post processing inside of the images. It's very easy and it's very simple. So it doesn't take a lot of time; just uh, um, just uh, several minutes, and you will get uh, results of data post processing. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I can answer. Uh, Maxim, do we have any questions? So? Not now. Not now. Okay. And right now, uh, software uh, are recording, uh, is recording uh, new images in the new folder with uh, updated coordinates. It will take uh, one minute or more. So after post-processing, it will record all, um, all uh, it will record new images with the new coordinates. Um, maybe Maxim, you will ask me some questions uh, in order to uh, to discuss. Um, Maxim, uh, how we will uh, update a client's drones? Oh, okay. So right now um, uh, there are two ways. Uh, uh, we can send PPK equipment to the client. And he will install it, but it, uh, it uh, for this solution for Autel right now, 
if you have some experience with soldering, uh, you can uh, you can install uh, PPK equipment. If not, you can send uh, the drone to our office, uh, and we uh, we will uh, we will cover your expenses of uh, sending drone to our office. Now, uh, uh, while uh, until we uh, until we produce special connector uh, to install it. Uh, uh, as you know, for for Mavic 2 Pro or Phantom 4 Pro. We supply special cable to connect to DJI system, and right now we are producing the same cable uh, for the drone. But uh, if you need uh, to upgrade the uh, outel right now, you need to send the drone to our office. It's uh, it's uh, only uh, it's not so suitable, but uh, of course uh, we, we will do it in one two days, and delivery will take uh, several days as well. So uh, we will arrange everything. So and right now this one it's a. Uh, 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 position of photos and green color, light green color shows us uh, precise position of fixed solution. And there are some photos uh, which are uh, which doesn't which, which don't have precise uh, solution. It just have a float coordinates, but um, it, it can be. Uh, uh, it, it's not a problem first of all. And why we have uh, some float solutions? Because we have a mountains close to this area and they close uh, um, view of satellites, some satellites, and this is why we have a float solution, but it doesn't matter. As soon as we have a huge coverage of uh, fixed images after post-processing, you will get definite, you will get precise uh, results. It's uh, due to the photogrammetric data process. Maxim, we have one question. Yes. Most, most common errors doing PPK workflow most common errors? Yeah. It's a very good question. First of all, you need to divide images per flight. First of all, you need to divide images uh, uh, to separate folders. You have one flight, you need to copy all images from one flight in one folder. From the second flight to the second folder. Uh, for the third flight, you need to copy all images to the third folder. And don't delete any unuseful images. For example, you just switched on the drone, switched on the PPK solution, and you make uh, and you made some uh, test photos. Don't delete it because number of photos should be equal to number of photo events. It's very important. If you delete some unuseful images for software, it's very difficult to find out uh, connection. Uh, next common. Uh, the next common problem. For example, you use a base station, and uh, as a base station, you use a, a chip solution like uh, MLID RS2. It just has L1, a, a L1 Genesis receiver inside. And inside of our drones, there is uh, L1, L2 Genesis receiver, multi band, and so on. And in this case, accuracy will uh, will depend on uh, on the base station because you have just only L1. So it is better for your flights. It is better to use uh, L1, L2 base station as well. And uh, some users are going to uh, are going to save their money and they uh, buy cheap uh, cheaper uh, 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 cheaper uh, base station. In this case, uh, you will have a problem as well. What, what else? And of course, you, you need to evaluate quality of Genesis signal. For example, you are flying close to the mountains and so on. And in this case, uh, you will get some uh, noise on Genesis signal and you can evaluate uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this using of this tool. And as you can see, we have very low number of satellites and uh, there are just only uh, GPS and GLONASS satellites. And uh, for, for the drone, and uh, for the base station, we have a, we can evaluate the quality of Genesis signal and uh, uh, not so many satellites as well. And um, uh, of course, what else? What else? It's a common mistakes. Common mistakes. Not common mistakes. Ah, and of course, you need to define precise position of the base station. So you you should install a base station in the field, and after that, uh, you need to define precise position of the base station. If you don't define precise position of the base station, uh, your data set will be processed, but it will be somewhere in the world, uh, let's say. And of course, uh, when you measure position of the base station, you need to measure center of antenna, not uh, ground. In this case, when you measure position of the base station in RTK mode, set up zero, set up zero. For, uh, for pole uh, height, for altitude of the antenna, set up zero. 
It's very important. Otherwise, you measure position of the ground. Okay, uh, so as soon as we made the uh, uh, post processing, next step is uh, uh, next step is the photogrammetric data processing. I will use Agisoft, but Outel data, Outel data, Outel data set support are uh, supported in Pixud, in Agisoft, and in 3D survey. So if you have any questions about Pix4D or 3D survey or Agisoft, you are welcome to ask any question. But I would like to show data processing in Agisoft. Why? Because it is much faster. But if you are interested in other software, I will definitely show you how to process data. But we need to wait more time for data processing. Uh, OK, uh, next step, uh, we will add uh, we will add the photos like uh, photos as as you can see after post processing uh, we will get uh, we will see a new folder output folder in output folder we have two different folders first of all it's updated text inside of this folder there are images with updated coordinates uh, of uh, of the center of the photos after post processing and we have additional folder, uh, folder uh, it, it will call, um, it, it will have a name Pix4D or Agisoft or 3D survey. It depends on type of the software which you are going to use to import coordinates from a text file. Inside of this folder, there is a text file with the coordinates and a local projection as well. But uh, I will update, uh, I will just open images. And after, as soon as you import images, you will see position of the photo on the map and go to reference. And you can see uh, accuracy of the images as well after post processing. So uh, it's a sign that software successfully imported, uh, uh, imported uh, coordinates and accuracy after post processing from images. So this is a sign if you have uh, uh, images accuracy here. So right now we know that all images have precise coordinates inside. And, uh, and uh, after that, we will run photo, photo alignment, aerial triangulation. And it's very important part. And uh, you need to set up accuracy of the images. It's very important. You, we, should to provide, uh, we should provide information to, to the software that our coordinates are accurate. In this case, during aerial triangulation, software will use these coordinates to make cell calibration of the camera and software will define all distortion parameters as well as the rolling shutter distortion pa parameters on the basis of the position of each photo and uh, you know uh, and all technology of data processing right now depends on high uh, high quality of uh, coordinates it's very important if we don't use uh, precise position of the photo software will define distortion parameters in wrong way and it will define rolling shutter distortion in the wrong way. And after that, even if you are using GCPs to align your block of the images, you are not able to achieve a good accuracy for the whole set of images. On the border of your area, you will have some distortion and you will have only precise position inside of the location of GCPs. But with PBK technology, you will get precise, uh, precise uh, terrain model, three-dimensional model all over uh, your area of your survey, even if it, it is um, uh, even on the border of the, of the area of survey. And, and uh, as soon as we are using rolling shutter camera right now, it's very important to remove rolling shutter distortion. What does it mean rolling shutter distortion? Um, rolling shutter distortion in, in few words, when we made survey with uh, global shutter camera, our camera received a uh, reflected, uh, reflected light from the ground in, in one moment for the whole uh, sensor. But with the rolling shutter, our, uh, uh, our, our camera receives a, a reflected light from the ground uh, line by line. In this case, as soon as our drone are moving during the flight, we, uh, our, uh, our image is a little bit distorted due to the moving of the object. And as soon as we know precise position of the photo, software are able to compute, are able to define flight speed, original flight speed. And after that, it will remove rolling shutter distortion. 
And uh, if you are talking about rolling shutter distortion, uh, I would suggest to visit our website, uh, uh, to visit our website, and you can read the article about rolling shutter distortion in our blog. We have a lot of articles which are very useful for our users about LiDAR survey, about photogrammetric survey, and so on. But uh, um, uh, there is an article about rolling shutter distortion and how it works. And it's uh, uh, common. Uh, and if people are not familiar with the uh, 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 with the uh, with uh, photogrammetry, with uh, real status of photogrammetry right now, they said that uh, rolling shutter distortion is not so good for mapping, and there are a lot of distorted images, and it's not possible to remove. No, it's wrong. It's possible to remove rolling shutter distortion, and you don't need to stop the drone during the flight. What you need is just to provide precise position, position of the images. And this article in our blog uh, uh, shows us what does it mean rolling shutter distortion. So uh, on the left side, you can see a global shutter camera. It receives uh, reflected uh, uh, light from the ground uh, in one, one uh, time. And for uh, rolling shutter distortion, uh, uh, our sensor receives information line by line. After that, as soon as our drone are moving, we, 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 need, uh, we have some distortion due to the um, uh, movement of, the, of, of our sensor. And after that, we need to remove it. And in order to remove it, we need to know uh, a, a start point uh, of capturing of the image and end point of capturing of the image. After that, we can remove from shutter distortion. And right now, um, Agisoft just uh, is finalizing uh, uh, aerial triangulation. But in general, Agisoft doesn't know that we have a rolling, sh a rolling shutter camera. And we need to set up that uh, uh, it is a rolling shutter camera and we need to apply additional corrections so right now uh, our camera uh, our, our images are aligned but rolling shutter distortion is not uh, compensated to compensate rolling shutter distortion edges of you you need just to select uh, uh, this option fit additional correction and after that with using of precise position of the photo software will remove rolling shutter distortion easily Action. yes uh, we have a question connected uh, to this, uh, do you perform any camera calibration on a GSoft? Um, uh, Through the tools that comes with the software, the uh, just yeah, yeah. screen uh, and so on. Uh, this ca camera calibration tool in a uh, belongs to Global Shutter Camera, um, and you need to establish a special stand where you, you, you need to measure a lot of checkpoints, for example, on the wall, and you need to make several photos on the wall, and after that, you can. Uh, uh, define distortion parameters. It's one way. It's old style way, which was uh, designed at, uh, 40 or more years ago. And, uh, uh, but right now it's not necessary. How to do it? As soon as, our soft, uh, as soon as we provide to the edges of precise position of the photo, software knows the precise uh, location of images. After that, it starts to define tie points. What does it mean tie points? Tie points are the common points between images. And uh, if you look at uh, data processing, we can see that uh, every time I just soft collect 20,000 tie points, for example, on the image, after that, it, it finds co common points for each image. And after that, I just soft is using these tie points like um, calibration points and starts to define distortion parameters, starts to, uh, starts to calibrate uh, camera. And after post-processing with using of precise position of the photo, after self-calibration of the camera, you will get, uh, you will get uh, precise distortion parameters. But if you are using rolling shutter camera, you need to, uh, you need to add the uh, compensation of rolling shutter. As soon as we made it right now, we can go to tools, camera calibration, and we go to adjust and, and we can see adjust distor uh, distortion parameters, which can be defined in a special laboratory with using of special marks on the wall when you capture images, or you can use it, or you can use just overlapping images uh, to define common points and on the basis of the common points, and it's very important, on the basis of the precise position of the photo, software can define distortion parameters. If, and, make, uh, and it means uh, camera calibration. 
And if you don't provide precise position of the images, it's not possible to define uh, distortion parameters in an appropriate way. And this is why when you may survey just with the uh, GCPs, especially with the rolling shutter camera, you will get a lot of error and you have accuracy like a wave every time. It's not stable, but uh, right now, as soon as distortion parameters are defined well, uh, we, we, uh, we can use it for data processing. Uh, next step, as soon as we made the uh, aerial triangulation, and as soon as we define distortion parameters, uh, we uh, can upload uh, ground control points and check the accuracy. But before uploading ground control points, I would like to say one very important thing that focal, uh, uh, one of the camera calibration parameters is, is the focal length, lens. It's very important parameter. And, uh, and um, on, on focal lens, uh, so accuracy and altitude depends exactly on the focal lens. And we need to calibrate focal lens. It's very important. And you, you can use just only one GCP to calibrate focal lens. And I can show you. As soon as you calibrate focal lens, you can use it uh, for, for your future flights. And it is very stable, especially for hotel ever um, inside of mission planning uh, uh, application, you can uh, set up camera to infinity in manual mode. Ah, it's very important. I forgot. And in mission planning, you should set up uh, focusing to manual mode. You need to focus on infinity in manual mode and don't touch it with parameter. Don't use autofocus option. Don't use any automatic uh, settings for flight. If you are using automatic settings for the flight, like focus, automatic focus, so aperture and so on, uh, it's not so good. And if you, uh, and you need to, to use stable, uh, consistent focal lens. And consistent fo focal lens um, can be set up by manual focusing. And after that, uh, as soon as you calibrate focal lens uh, in one flight, you can use it in uh, all your flights. But don't change focus uh, to infinity. Uh, what else? Okay. And right now, I am going to uh, upload uh, GCPs. I am going to upload GCPs to check the accuracy. Um, we measure some checkpoints, more than uh, thirty checkpoints all over the this area. And um, I will import these checkpoints. And uh, what I need, uh, I need, uh, I need to set up appropriate uh, coordinate system. Uh, after that, uh, I need to set up uh, right uh, fields, mm, longitude, uh, latitude, altitude. And okay, and click OK. And I will import checkpoints. After that, we will just select one checkpoint. Uh, we will just select one checkpoint. It's, uh, it can be used uh, as a checkpoint. You can use, uh, for example, your own base station, just one checkpoint to calibrate focal lens. How to do it? For example, I will use uh, checkpoint number 13. Number 13. And uh, number 13, as you can see, it's a little bit moved from the, from the position. It is here. Why it is a little bit moved? Because right now on the screen, we, we can see representation of three-dimensional uh, error in two dimensions. And it is moved like a vector between three, uh, three-dimensional error. What I can do, um, I just uh, select this point and move it here. Just one point. To define precise position of this point. And after that, if we go to error, we can see that uh, this point has the following error. It has one and two centimeters error in its secret position. And 88 centimeters error in altitude. Why? Because for the software, it's not possible to define focal lens automatically. Every time when you process data, if you don't fix this parameter, software will calculate new focal lens. And we need to define it. How to do it? Uh, 
we will switch off all images, all other GCPs, and we don't, uh, uh, we don't, uh, we are not going to use it. We just use one GCP to uh, uh, to define focal lengths. We set up this point. After that, we go to modify, and we set up accuracy for this point in x y position, like fifty meters. So it doesn't. It doesn't influence to the uh, to the position in x x in x y, but we set up uh, accuracy uh, for this point uh, in altitude like one centimeter. So it just update only altitude, and we click OK, and we click OK, um, and let's go to camera calibration. And this one it's adjusted parameter. Just remember it. This one it's just adjusted focal length parameter. As soon as we define this point like 50 meters accuracy, so it doesn't influence to any position in Y uh, during processing, and it will influence uh, in the position in uh, altitude. And after that, we will update uh, aerial triangulation. We need to update it just with one point. And as soon as the software will update aerial triangulation, it will update just value of focal length, nothing more. And you can save this focal lens and then you can use it for your future data processing. This is one thing we should, should make for the first fly of your large area survey. And uh, remember that uh, without a drone, you can fly 30 minutes. Uh, it's uh, uh, 10 minutes more than Mavic 2 Pro or Phantom 4 Pro. And, uh, and I totally forgot to show you the difference between images uh, between Autel and Mavic and Phantom. And this is why we have so good accuracy within three centimeters in x y position. Because the resolution of the image, the quality of the, uh, of the photos are much uh, is, is better. All photos are much better than uh, in comparison with uh, uh, Mavic 2 Pro and Phantom 2 Pro. And this is why Autel is more accurate in data processing. Because for photogrammetry data processing, quality of the images are very important. And as soon as we optimize, uh, optimize camera locations, uh, it will re-update distortion parameters. And after that, we can check accuracy everywhere. And as you can see, we just use only one GCP to calibrate focal lens. Maxim, do we have any questions? So no, we don't have questions, but uh, I can show uh, to our clients uh, how look um, uh, the PPK upgrade for Mavic 2 Pro. And uh, this is the cable uh, we use to connect. So this is a self-installation construction. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the Autel kit uh, uh, will looks looks like uh, will, uh, will looks look like, like that uh, soon. Exactly. Uh, PPK equipment for Autel will look like for Mavic 2 Pro. It will be just a flexible cable and PPK equipment, and you can install your PPK equipment on Autel drone, but it takes time to produce such flexible cables. It's, uh, to, to tell the truth right now, with a common situation in the world, all supply chain, uh, chain, uh, chain uh, uh, chains are, are, are destroyed. And uh, only, there are only a few uh, factories in the world which can produce so thin, flexible cables, uh, and they're located in China. And uh, unfortunately, in China, we have a lockdown. So right now, we have such solution. It can be installed by us, uh, uh, and uh, we can do it. So if you, are, if you have some, uh, if you have some, uh, um, some, uh, job for surveying, I would suggest just uh, to send us a drone and uh, or you can send uh, the drone to our dealers all over the world and they will help you to install as well. We, we, are, uh, we are supporting our dealers and they will help. Okay, so right now we just uh, use one GCP to update uh, uh, focal lens and here we can see that focal lens is updated and this one it's a real focal lens. And this one focal lens in uh, pixels, and we can use it in millimeters as well. Next step, next step, next step. We are going to evaluate accuracy for all our GCPs. We are not using this GCPs in uh, aerial triangulation, and I would like to prove with you that the whole uh, coverage of uh, of the uh, of the area, uh, all all covered area, has a very good accuracy, uh, even on the border of the, of the survey. And uh, let, 
let's check the accuracy for point number 29, for example. It's uh, close to, the, uh, to this point, but uh, uh, let's check the accuracy. And we see that uh, the point is exactly located on the mark. And uh, let's choose another one point. For example, exactly on the border of our survey, for example, point 17 or 23. Uh, for 23, we have some distortion. Uh, it's uh, on, on the uh, on on uh, it's on the corner, but I think uh, accuracy will be not. Uh, let's check. Let's see the accuracy. I think let's check the accuracy. Uh, and we have very good accuracy in x y, but uh, in one direction we have accuracy like nine centimeters because it's all located exactly all, all on the border. But let's see the accuracy of twenty two. And uh, for twenty two, uh, accuracy is much better. Is much better. Why? Because uh, uh, sometimes, of course, on the border, uh, there are some distortion, but uh, uh, in general, you will have very stable accuracy, very, very stable accuracy. And let's see point number 24, uh, which one? 16, for example. And six, 16 as well is located in a good position. And if we check the position, we, we will have the same accuracy. Uh, the same situation here. Uh, everywhere we have very good position. We can check the position uh, and we can uh, uh, be careful about automatic point uh, uh, definition. Sometimes it, uh, we need to co co correct it. But we have accuracy like two or three centimeters definitely everywhere. Everywhere we have approximately the same accuracy. And as you can see, this checkpoints was not used. Uh, so uh, three centimeters accuracy and so on. So and everywhere we, where we can uh, check, uh, check the accuracy, we will have the same, uh, the same result. Uh, what else? Uh, do we have any questions so? Yeah, we have one question. Uh, I would like to say that uh, the antenna also is removable, so you can fit uh, to standard transportation case. And we have another question from Marty. What's the difference in using the RTK antenna that comes with the Evo and yours? Uh, in general, uh, it doesn't matter which Genesis antenna. What you need is PPK processing. Because RTK is not, as I already said, that RTK is not uh, uh, is not uh, so efficient if you work in unreachable areas, if you work without coverage of uh, GSM network, if you work in the mountain areas, and so on. It's better to use PPK. And in our post-processing software, uh, we have support for auto uh, ever as well, and we have a video in our YouTube channel how to process uh, auto RTK data set. So uh, what we offer? We offer PPK solution for clients who are not able to install original RTK, or we provide PPK post-processing software, which support different kinds of projection, geoid, and so on, for real out RTK burns. Uh, what else? Uh, and uh, what else? So for data processing, next step. As soon as we uh, evaluate the accuracy, we can uh, generate point cloud, we can generate point cloud and we can uh, process data. And after generating a point cloud, uh, we can evaluate real accuracy, not, uh, uh, not accuracy which is, uh, which, uh, is shown, is shown uh, uh, in a photogrammetric survey. I, uh, I spent some time and generated point cloud and after that, I will load this point cloud and I will show you the real position of GCPs in a real point cloud from this flight. I will add the data set. Mm. 
Um, I will add data set just a moment. Uh, I will, ah, I will load the uh, point cloud. Uh, just a moment. I, I need to see. Uh, I need to find point cloud. But uh, Maxim, uh, could you ask me some questions uh, while I'm uh, looking for the point cloud? Ah, this one. You found it. Yeah, yeah, I found it. This one. It's a point cloud. Uh, this one. Uh, there was a question. Uh, why? Uh why the client should buy our equipment instead of Autel RTK? It's a very good question. Uh, if you already buy uh, Autel uh, drone, you need to convert it to a real survey drone. You need to install PPK equipment. It's not possible to install this RTK model on uh, Autel EVA 2 Pro. Uh, Autel uh, EVA 2 Pro, it's not supported. You need to buy RTK version. If you don't buy it, you can uh, come to us and we install it and we will uh, we will offer if uh, and uh, of course if you buy a real uh, outdated rtk you need to buy uh, post processing software it costs a lot of money and why you need to pay more our software is included to ppk uh, to ppk model it comes together with our ppk model or you need to spend more money for post processing of outdated data uh, what else? Uh, this is, and of course, it's cheaper than to buy uh, DJI uh, Autel RTK. It's cheaper, definitely cheaper. Okay, this one it's a point cloud, and of course, we provide support. We provide training for data processing, so you are not alone. Uh, what I can see in the, in the, in the chats uh, in the, in Facebook groups, people from Autel they are alone. Um, they are survey jobs. Not uh, they don't know what the what they have in their hands and they have a perfect drone and this one out of data uh was uh, which was generated and it's amazing point cloud really amazing point cloud it looks like a lidar survey if we are not working in the forest area and uh, let's evaluate the accuracy and i would like to add uh, here gcps And I will add GCPs in real point cloud. And I will change color and the size of uh, these points just to, to show it is better. And now we can evaluate the accuracy of uh, these checkpoints. Uh, so this one is checkpoint and you, you see amazing position or, or on the ground in X Y position. And we can add, uh, uh, and we can see accuracy of the point. This one, the GPCP, which was measured by RTK Genesis receiver. And this one, it's a point cloud. I will increase the size of the point cloud as well too. And this one, it's a point cloud, which was generated in the software. And the difference, and as you can see, position in XY, it's like one or three centimeters, definitely, and position and altitude is just, uh, um, and uh, error and altitude, just several centimeters. And we can evaluate everywhere the same accuracy for points, uh, just uh, what, we, uh, what we can do. We, uh, I, I will decrease point size for the point cloud to, to see where we have uh, some GCPs. Yeah, for example, here we have a GCP as well, and we can measure. And as you can see, position is six degrees, and it's uh, amazing. And uh, we have outstanding accuracy of uh, an altitude. An altitude, we will have like three, four centimeter sectors. So this is what to, what we can do. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, and we can check accuracy everywhere here uh, in the, every point, uh, what you need. And uh, um, here we can evaluate the accuracy and uh, accuracy and altitude at just four centimeters. So 
Um, and here we can evaluate the accuracy and the position is that it's bad, uh, it's good, and uh, position and altitude is just like two or three centimeters in altitude. So I would say that Autel provides very good data sets, even from 70 meters altitude with a high, high flight speed, and everywhere you will have a very good uh, accurate 3D point cloud, and you can use for your mapping and so on. Uh, do we have any questions, Son? Yeah. Uh, would you perform any oblique flight to improve 3D model generation? Yeah, exactly. It's a very good question. And uh, um, it's a very good question. And uh, I would like to show you another one project which we made. Uh, uh, we fly, uh, ob uh, we made oblique flights uh, around the uh, castle, uh, Ch uh, Chilion Crasser uh, here in Switzerland. It's a very uh, famous place, and we made the double grid mission, and we made oblique flights around this castle, and this one results of post-processing. And after that, what you need, uh, what you need uh, is just uh, to add all images together and run aerial triangulation, nothing more, because uh, all images are, uh, has a very precise position. It, it can be seen from post-processing techniques. And after that, you will get very precise 3D point cloud, and I will open it as well. Um, uh, I will open uh, point cloud. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, just a moment. Uh, while I'm uh, looking for point cloud, Maxim, could you ask me some questions? Yeah, this one. Uh, Maxim, you you told that. Uh... Uh, the RTK version is uh, cheaper, but it's not. RTK, RTK, cheap, RTK version is uh, more expensive. Oh. Now it's uh, the same price. We discussed it. No, so... it's not the same price. Ah, I think it's the guy who who just uh, uh, removed me from uh, Autel Evo, uh, Autel Evo uh, group from Facebook. Is this one? So I, I can, can uh, I can uh, repeat. So PPK solution provides better quality and better quality of coordinates. And you are not uh, stick to um, you are not stick to um, uh, to the GSM network to RTK network. And you can use any base station. And you can install a base station and you can fly within twenty kilometers range from the base station. So PPK solution is much better. And of course, I already said that we provide PPK uh, software together with our PPK model, which is, in, and the price of this model is included to, uh, to, to, to the price of PPK equipment. Additionally, we have a special offer for PPK solution and it costs less than all other solution from DJI. Why? Because uh, uh, we, are, we are going to push this market as, as we know that uh, uh, PPK drone is, uh, uh, is, uh, Autel drone is better than uh, Mavic 2 Pro, for example, or Phantom 4 Pro. I, I like it much better. So I would say that we will provide the better price. And uh, if uh, if uh, if users are going to move to with an affordable uh, solution to the survey market, they can ask us, and we will provide all kind of uh, uh, service. We, we will provide all kind of support as well as the training. And we have a lot of clients who. Uh, started from the beginning, and right now they have very good experience, and they, and they're using our affordable uh, equipment, and they move to lidar survey, and uh, they uh, they just invest a small amount of money, and right now uh, they expand their equipment for lidar survey. They just earn money from uh, this using of our PPK equipment, and right now, okay. So and uh, right now we are going to. Uh, to open point cloud uh, from oblique flights, and this one it's an oblique flight. And I would like to, and I would like to say the truth. I try to explain this situation in out uh, Facebook group, and I was deleted. Why I don't know why it's uh, something strange, uh, but uh, it's reality. Okay. Uh, um, so next time, uh, so I would like to show you. Uh, uh, point cloud from uh, oblique flight, and this point cloud was created by Altel Ever uh, with PPK model, and it has a very good uh, 
but of course, we are, uh, what I'd like to say, we are not going to compete to, and to be rival with DJ, uh, without the RTK version. It's not necessary, but we provide a very efficient tool for post-processing to work with, with a custom geoid file, custom projection. Uh, to, to process, uh, we have a great advantage of automatic data processing. In our software, you can process uh, in the same time several flights, 10 flights, which is very important for surveyors because surveyors are not uh, focused on one small flight. Uh, they made, uh, uh, usually they make 10 flights, 10 flights, and, uh, and so on. So, and this one is a point cloud uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, Autel. This one it's a point cloud from Autel, and it's uh, which uh, which was used for oblique flights as well. So if you have any questions, so yeah, uh, another any... another question from Marty. Uh, the promise is uh, is the last question, Marty. Uh, we are very grateful for your questions, so you can ask it uh, as much as you as you want. Uh, maximum recommended speed during flight. It doesn't matter uh, uh, why. If you use precise position of the images, uh, you can fly even with 10 meters per second on a high altitude, and it will get very good results. Uh, of course, people uh, people said that rolling shutter camera is not so good for uh, high speed flying. But if you read our article about uh, uh, about rolling shutter distortion, you will understand that uh, we have different comparison from Mavic data, but Autel has totally the same. And uh, uh, we uh, we approved that uh, even flying with 10 meters per second from 100 meters altitude, you will get very good results. But for a rolling shutter data, uh, for rolling shutter camera, it's, uh, there is one uh, requirement. It is better to fly with double grid mission. It helps to remove rolling shutter distortion better. It helps to calibrate focal lengths better. Okay, so this is what we uh, uh, and the quality of the point clouds. It's amazing. So we fly. We made the oblique flights, uh, as you can see now um, in in this screenshot. It's uh, oblique flights, and uh, we we made double grid. And after that, I was very impressed by the quality of the point cloud here on on the railroad. On the railroad. And uh, um, um, if we create a cross section of the railroad, we can de definitely measure altitude of the uh, rails as well. So it's amazing point cloud, very, very good. I like it. And uh, this one, it's a point cloud of the railroad. And uh, we can definitely measure position or uh, altitude of the rails as well, as well as well as we are able to vectorize not only uh, not only uh, buildings, uh, uh, not only buildings or roofs or, or roads. We can vectorize. I will create it like this one uh, to show you. Maxim, uh, what about overlapping? Would be 75 to 75 percent fair enough? Oh uh, yes, exactly. Uh, if you use double grid, uh, you can fly with 70 percent overlapping. It's totally enough. Yes, but uh, let's see uh, that we can uh, we can uh, generate uh, power poles, uh, any poles, wires. Everything is shown here. So. You can vectorize data, and you can create a real. Uh, uh, you can create vector layers of different kind of objects, such as power lines, uh, uh, poles, and so on. So you you are able to create very amazing three dimensional model, and after that to vectorize. Yes, uh, with double grid you can fly with seventy uh, or eighty percent of overlapping, or sixty or ninety. And if you had oblique flights, it will help you to. Uh, to reconstruct, uh, uh, to reconstruct uh, facades and so on.
Yeah, so this is what I would like to show you today. And if you have question about uh, uh, pixel D data processing or 3D survey data processing, uh, you can ask us. We provide training, uh, uh, next training for photogrammetry data processing uh, will be this, this week. And uh, we offer our clients to join this training as well. And uh, uh, and uh, to, to sum up, so Autel it's the best drone and you can convert to real survey drone. And uh, of course, uh, uh, for to get a good accuracy, you need to know a lot of parameters. And uh, Topadron post-processing software help you to to define precise position of the photo, help you to uh, to be more flexible in the field. Uh, of course, PPK or RTK solution helps you to avoid a lot of me uh, measuring of a lot of checkpoints. Uh, what else? Uh, um, and uh, any PPK drone from us uh, can be used with, uh, with another one equipment, like LiDAR. And you can colorize point cloud from this uh, georeferenced mm -hmm. images. So you are very flexible. And you can fly with uh, LiDAR, and you can fly with, uh, without, any, uh, without any problems. And you will colorize data, which will, will be made by our client uh, in Martinique. He already made uh, successful flights here, and uh, he already surveyed amazing point cloud, uh, lighter point cloud of uh, power lines as well. Uh, so, uh, what else? And of course, we have a lot of solutions uh, for for photogrammetry. We are not only stick to consumer drones, but we design our own solution for high precision mapping and for. Uh, large area survey and uh, right now we design and uh, right now we supply a 61 megapixel camera which is based on a full frame sony camera and it has full integration to dji like a shutter speed uh, uh, like uh, like uh, aperture iso and so on and uh, with this camera you can easily survey one square kilometer one square kilometer we can easily survey it, uh, per one flight uh, with 61 megapixel camera and the best advantage uh, the uh, it's advantage of the camera that we can install different lens and we can install wide uh, uh, field of view lens uh, like six, uh, 16 uh, like 18 millimeters like 24 millimeters and you can change and you can uh, change uh, the coverage of your survey so it's a very good uh, idea as well and of course, we have a wide range of LiDAR solutions uh, uh, and uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, affordable and low cost uh, LiDARs based on uh, LiveOx sensors uh, to high precision uh, LiDARs, which is based on uh, high precision Velodyne HDL sensor. And we have a middle, a middle size solution, but which provides amazing accuracy and it can be used together with our cameras, with our PPK. And we have our own data processing workflow. It's like, like a, our own data processing world uh, where you can process PPK data from the drone. You can process RTK data from Autel RTK or from DJI RTK. You can process uh, LiDAR data, uh, generate point cloud. And data processing of the LiDAR is much easier and faster. And uh, if you want, you can join our webinar about LiDAR data processing and so on. And and we try to support all our clients like we made uh, for Jean-Francois and we designed. And thank you to Jean-Francois from Martinique that he asked us to design PPK solution uh, for our thing. Right now, we are very happy that we expand our market and we help a lot of clients all over the world uh, to convert their consumer drone to a survey machine. And we, you are welcome to join our uh, members of Tapadrome. And uh, if you would like to make an order, do not hesitate uh, to write to email info at topadron.com and we will send you a quotation and, uh, and make a train for you. Thank you for, uh, for, for your questions. F thank you for, for your attention. And I hope that uh, my presentation will help you in the future and will help uh, uh, to, to expand your business. It will help you to uh, to be more competitive in comparison with our surveyors and it will help to save your time in the field and in data processing as well. Uh, Maxim, we have a 
uh, a very important question in my opinion uh, for someone who has no experience and looking and getting into th this field of work what is a good starting point to gain the knowledge do you need to be a surveyor or have a similar degree or education in the united states uh, what i would say that right now every drone pile can be uh, not a surveyor but uh, can uh, to be a surveyor you should uh, pass some uh, courses and you you should know um, a lot of things but you can get very accurate results with using of uh, of the drones and i know a lot of examples when for example designers come to survey market in order to cut their expenses not to pay for the surveyors and they bought their drone uh, own drone and they they started from ppk solution with photogrammetry and right now they bought lidar solution and and they got a lot of experience of the surveying and right now they are very very experienced it's very it's very good example we have one client from costa rica and uh, this client came to us for the training to finland when we provide uh, the training in finland and uh, uh, um, and they didn't know anything about photogrammetry post-processing but he was a surveyor he knows how to use uh, 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 gps receiver to measure checkpoints and so on and he bought our PPK equipment. It was several years ago. He came from Costa Rica to, uh, to in the winter to Finland to pass our training, uh, training course. After several years, he got so many uh, experience in the drone flights and he became a major player in Costa Rica for photogrammetry and for surveying with using of our equipment. And it was very cheap. It was, and right now it is cheaper than uh, other solutions but it provides a very good accuracy it's very reliable and we have a lot of clients who come back to us to buy a new equipment and after a few years he came to us to buy a lighter and he bought a lighter for and within one year he he became a major player of lighter survey one why because he he knows every everything about ppk post processing he knows everything about lighter survey and he can make survey even in the forest areas where it's not possible to come, in the mountain areas where it's not possible to come, and it takes hundreds of days to days to measure GCPs and so on. And he uh, used lighter uh, for uh, for work, and he spent just one day with the lighter. And if he use a uh, total station or GPS, he will spend several months in in the forest to measure everything. And right now he became to receive orders from a large lighter company which has uh, fi uh, not fixed wing uh, which has aerial bond lighter which costs a million or several hundred dollars of uh, 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 the lighter on, on airborne but it's very expensive to rise uh, this airplane to fly over the Costa Rica to make a survey and they started to send him uh, see, they started to send him orders and right now he's going to upgrade his lighter to more efficient tool. Uh, we have a different uh, efficiency of the lighters. And right now he would he would like to upgrade the lighter. And he comes from from a low point. And right and we have a lot of examples of such uh, of such clients. I and uh, they become of our friends and they uh, and and they are very uh, fam uh, famous in their countries as well. Yes, it's uh, it's a reality. And I appreciate a lot of uh, our clients who come to us to share their feedbacks and we show them and we, we provide training and so on. And of course, just, uh, but uh, to answer uh, in short way, pass, first of all, pass the training, start to make a survey. And uh, uh, within one or two, in two years, you will get amazing experience and after that you will be more well-known guy that others real surveyors visit all the common techniques with the total station gps and so on this is my uh, this is my uh, reply okay uh, let's uh, uh, thank everyone who joined us today uh, to see our webinar and this webinar will be available uh, on our YouTube channel in a few days, and uh, you can uh, and you can 
watch data processing in a short, uh, in a slow motion, and you can follow all steps of data processing. And we will upload demo, demo data set uh, in our website, and you, you can download. And if you need to upgrade PPK, uh, your auto drone to PPK solution, just ask the patron. Also, uh, the record will be available and at our Facebook page and our Telegram channel. So subscribe, and uh, you will never miss a news. And I hope my account in Facebook and the official Autel uh, uh, group uh, enterprise group will be unfreezed because I think a lot of users uh, uh, for a lot of users they need uh, real information about survey. We are not going to compete with anybody. We are going to provide a good knowledge for surveyors and to to facilitate their work. Thank you very much. Thanks everyone. Adios, bye bye. Uh, nos vemos. <laughs> so, okay. Bye. Bye bye.